What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome in on a wonderful Monday evening here on the Film Guy Network. And man, I, 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 I loathe this time of the year sometimes, but I also like relish it because, you know, you get to that point in the year where you don't really know what you're going to talk about, but you got to prepare as much as you possibly can. So today, before I head down to some state title games, I'm, I'm preparing for, hey, I'm, I'm finna unload the DeMello Jones in-person evals. I'm finna talk about some Aaron Philo to open this, this show. I'm finna open the local hour with some local high school football recruiting talk, like we do sometimes in the offseason. And uh, I get a phone call from, from, from a, a, a big, important phone call that's like, hey, uh, you might want to get off that field. You might want to get off that field and start calling some people because – Things are happening. Things are really, really happening around one of the biggest names in the 2024 recruiting class. So that's what you're here for today. So we're not going to waste any time on DeMello Jones. We're going to get to it eventually. We're going to open the show uh, with this Dylan Riola news. Uh, here it is. He is rumored to uh, potentially flip, or maybe it's already even done, according to some reporting, potentially flip uh, to Nebraska, where his father, Dominic, played. Uh, and, and this is last minute. Obviously been a Georgia commit for a long time after having been an Ohio State commit. Um, and, boys, I, I, I don't even know where I was going to go with this to open the show because it kind of got sprung on me as I was driving over here. A couple of things. Uh, this is what I know about this recruitment. Up until this point was never – it might have been mentioned, but it was never primarily talked about NIL. Like, honestly, it was never even mentioned from, from a, 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 an Intel standpoint. Hey, could it play a role? All this stuff. Never was a, a, a factor, if you will, in the Dylan Riola sweepstakes. In fact, there, there was a lot of uh, talks at that Elite 11. You know, people, people start talking and you're watching all the same quarterbacks. And there was a lot of talk about how Dylan might have sacrificed a lot of money making the decision to go to Georgia because it was about a football thing. All right, so it was that much of a not an NIL play. And now the reporting is, and the, the information that I'm receiving on the way here today is that Nebraska has came in with a all the chips in, okay, kind of NIL approach at this last minute with Dylan Riola. Now, I want to say this before we get on to anything else. I have checked in with the Dylan Riola camp, and I, I, I'm either being like played dumb, like we're getting a bunch of playing dumb, or this is like out of nowhere, they're playing dumb kind of deal, all right? So the Dylan Riola camp still like, woo, how about them dogs? Everything else, not sounding great right now. And it is sounding like an NIL-based play. Uh, and I want to play this clip for you guys because this was my first thought. Everybody run into the takes. We'll get to the takes in a minute. Everybody's got the hot takes. But if this were to be true, this was the first sound bite I had in my head today. Make no mistake that a, a good quarterback in the portal costs you know a million to a million five to two million dollars right now. So just 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 on the same page, right? So um, let's, let's make sure we all understand what's happening. So um, um, you know, there's some teams that have six six or seven million dollar players playing for them. A million to a million five, okay, six or seven multi million dollar players playing for them. Um, I don't know. There's no actual rumors to the numbers. I've just been given like firm belief that this is true uh, in terms of this has been the approach it sounds like there's been like I said a last moment or a last minute kind of push from uh, Nebraska from an NIL standpoint and I would imagine here's how this works as a recruit you go to your coach and you say hey or a recruits camp however that they got agents at this point um your agent goes to the coach or whoever goes to the coach or your point of contact says this is what we've been approached with do with that what you will kind of deal I, I don't it's what we're coming to. This is, where, this is where we're at now in college football. So there you go. Well, especially knowing that Dylan's dad played in the NFL for a long time. So he's very familiar with this business side of things. So this isn't something that this family is unfamiliar with. They know how this business side of football works. And this is kind of what the territory that you've gotten into with college football. And this, like something like this just goes to show you how quickly things can change, how quickly things can turn on their head. Because, I mean, Dylan spent the entire season at Georgia games. I mean, if Georgia had a home game, Dylan Raiola was there sitting in the stands. He did go to uh, Nebraska once this season. Okay. Um, can't remember which football game it was. I don't think it was a, a, a win, nonetheless. But <laughs> he, he was definitely in Nebraska this year at some point. And we haven't brought this up. His, uh, his uncle, Donovan, his dad's brother, is on the staff. He's the offensive line coach. And uh, there is some frivolous reporting that is not frivolous. There is some uh, 
captions and some titles on some articles that we were reading and that I sent to you guys in the chat about Donovan, uh, Donovan Riola and his, his recent contract extension at Nebraska. Now, this is what the title of the article reads. And this is why, guys, y'all, y'all, y'all understand by now, we read around here. All right, so I'm going to do some reading to you, but I, I don't love what's happening right here because it got thrown into the mentions and everybody's running with this one. Um, it does look flaky off this title. Quote, Donovan Rayola, who is Dylan's uncle, got 53% pay raise extra year on Nebraska contract. Now, that article was released three days ago and was updated an hour ago. So that, that look off rip, very, very fishy. Now, you scroll down on this article, all right, which is over and available on Omaha World Herald. Shouts out, modern journalism. Okay, this is by Sam McEwen. All right, down in the bottom of this article, you will find out that it's actually just a contract extension that matches Donovan Rayola's contract to the rest of the assistants on staff. However, he did get a $175,000 bonus within the last, quote, calendar year. So do with that what you will. It sounds to me like it was some matching going on, not some frivolous uh, back channel, hey, Pot or unks just got a, a raise, but I know a lot of people are doing that. I just want to stop that right there because it looks like it's just fair game. It's just like a regular contract extension. It is funny though that they worded it the way that they did for the headline. I that's why I, I think that's why the article was updated. That's what I'm saying. I, I I brought this to the attention of the audience because I wanted to talk about how they framed the article. I, for lack of a better term, I think it's kind of horseshit because um, it makes it seem like they just paid this dude at a very, very convenient time, when in reality, he just got matched with the rest of his colleagues at the university. This is such a weird time of year for college football because very like the, the season is still technically not over, but <laughs> there's so much looking forward towards what's going on next year to where the point where you've got like grown men stalking 16, 17, 18-year-olds Snapchats and Instagrams and things like that to see what's going on. So hey, at least we are at the point of the season at the in this space, you know, where we're tracking private planes. <laughs> That's the yeah. worst. That's the worst. That's next level. You know, I, I, I hope to never be one of these people. And you guys can hold my feet to the fire. Maybe we make a spoof out of it. But if there's ever a head coaching hire, whenever there's a head coaching hire at the University of Georgia, if you catch me on athens Clark County uh, private airport out there standing out by a fence, you know, waiting for somebody's private plane to pull up, nah, dog. You go ahead and make fun of me. Flame me up. I mean, we, like I said, we might spoof it. We might just, like, do a live stream and be like, what's up? We're out here doing this. But, yeah. The, the stalkings of the Instagrams were nuts. Also, the, the uh, Dylan Riola post today basically thanking Buford was, like, freaking people out as well. Yeah. Th this, is, this is one, man. This is what happens when you get in uh, involved with a five-star, highly titled recruit in today's day and age. We have told people on Patreon.com forward slash Brooks Awesome for about 18 months that every everything, no matter how set in stone you think a commitment is, everything comes with a bit of doubt. Every single thing in terms of recruitment and commitments nowadays comes with a, a smidge of doubt that can become a massive blown open door of doubt, okay? The moment NIL stuff starts getting involved. And with a, with a, uh, a booster base like Nebraska willing to win like Nebraska, this is no shock if this, again, is to be true. And I want to refresh, okay, because there's a lot of people here tonight that probably just showed up. I reached out to both sides of this. I've gotten, yeah. That, that, that ain't just smoke, that's fire. I've also gotten from the Riola camp, I don't know what y'all talking about. So, there you go. Um, I, I tend to believe lots of smoke. That's what I tend to believe um, with stuff like this. Now, here was the thing that Kirby did from jump, all right, and uh, continued to do, uh, continued to water that flower, continued to send uh, Todd Munkin up there when he was the OC, continued to send Mike Bobo up there, even though they play on Saturdays, is the Ryan Puglisi waters, all right, and the Ryan Puglisi uh, waterbed. And that thing is perfect. It is nice and stable. It looks like it's never going anywhere. It's been 10 toes down the entire time. And here's what I told our chat over on Discord, on patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin. They, on their board, all right, it was... Dylan Raiola, 1A, Ryan Puglisi, 1AA, number two, uh, the Julian Sayan kid going to Alabama. That was the Georgia board from Jump Street. All right, this Ryan Puglisi kid, man, this kid walked around campus to campus to campus uh, two summers ago and was just a walking circle of O's. Every single person that watched that dude throw a football was like, Phew, come be my guy, we'll green light you right now, whether it's Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, whoever. You are greenlit everywhere you go from just 
putting on a show in shorts and a t-shirt. This dude is extremely talented, and he's never once, boys, he's never once wavered from the idea that, A, he's going to be a Georgia Bulldog, and B, by God, if I got to win it, and if I got to go in there and fight for my job over some number one ranked quarterback or five star, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do it anyways. Yeah, I remember when um, he first originally committed – um, Pluglisi, that is. It, it kind of felt – everybody kind of just assumed like, oh, well, this is just a backup plan. This is just making sure that Georgia ends up with a quarterback in this class. And now as his recruitment has kind of progressed after the Elite 11 and even before that, he's turned into like, oh, this is a dude that is coming to Georgia because he is an SEC caliber. This is a dude at the quarterback position. Like, Georgia is now going to be getting two legit quarterbacks, and it's going to be a legitimate battle between the two. I also think it says a lot that the fact that his commitment has stayed tried and true throughout this entire yeah. process of bringing Raiola on and having him, where you basically have two quarterbacks in the class, two starting quarterbacks, two starting caliber quarterbacks, that is. So it's a big deal, to I think, that you've been able to hold on to him this long. And, and, and not even hold on to, but keep him in your class strongly. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, reaching out to him when Rayola first committed, you know, because he flipped from Ohio State. Uh, when Rayola first committed to the University of Georgia, I remember reaching out to Ryan and saying basically like, what's this mean for you? And his answer essentially was like, dude, I'm, I'm going to that place to compete. Like, I was either going, it was either going to be him or it was going to be the other guy. Like, we're, we're going to find out. Like, we're going to find out how good I am, essentially, was the vibes I got from Ryan. I've interviewed him several times. Everything, every bit of that kid's uh, being seems to be like, I have this chip on my shoulder. I'm this mass high school football player that knows he's good. He's confident in his abilities. Um, but there's this, I want to go, I want to mess around and find out. I want to find out just how great I am. And the only place to do that is the greatest place or the most competitive place uh, in college football right there. And that's the University of Georgia. At that specific position, uh, you could say Ohio State, you could say Alabama. Uh, these guys battle it out and duke it out at that Georgia quarterback spot uh, just as bad as anybody in the country. So obviously you got to see both of them throw at the Elite 11. You've yeah. gotten to kind of evaluate both of these players. So I guess the real question now is like, how good is Pugliese if you lose rail? Like in your opinion. All right, so – uh, when we separate this into a variety of different conversations, we're seeing them in shorts and t-shirts. Okay. I, I, I'll, I'll evaluate Dylan. I don't want to do better or worse. Okay. I, I want to tell you what I think about each individual player. All right. Let's start with Dylan. I think Dylan throws with a tremendous amount of touch and finesse. Okay. There's not a single ball that he throws where you're like, damn, that ball really arrived like violently. And you see that in the product or the, the limited amount of drops that his receivers have. Okay. He's also done a tremendous job of protecting the football since coming to the, to the state of Georgia. I think 31 passing touchdowns, zero interceptions. So you do that in seven, eight football, by the way, with that offensive line, you're, you're doing something. You can protect the football. Also, this wasn't, all right, check with me. Let's look at the sideline. Yellow five, yellow five. You know what I mean? It wasn't that this was, all right, I'm going to walk to the line of scrimmage. I'm controlling mic IDs. I'm flipping run games. I'm, I'm, I'm flipping tight ends. We're going to roll. We're going to roll with motion. We're going to, we're going to hang out all the pass protections on my shoulders. This was everything from a standpoint of Dylan, like neck up, being able to control absolutely everything. And by the way, from jump street, the moment he showed up at Buford, it was like, here's the whole playbook. How fast can you learn it? How fast can you take over everything? I don't know, three weeks. Okay, it was, it was immediately. So his processor, really, really high level. All right, and here's the other thing about Dylan. This, I mean, it's almost frightening. This is his fourth year of playing football, like playing organized football. Now, if you told me that kid's been like privately training the throwing motion since he was born, I wouldn't be shocked. All right, but playing real organized football, he ain't been doing it long. So whatever ceiling there is, it, it ain't really being scratched. I always had questions, and I think you will have questions on the next level about his top end athleticism, but that's going to be every quarterback, by the way. If they don't move like Jane Daniels, Bo Nix, or insert, you know, athletic quarterback running 4 5 nowadays, you're going to get these questions. He is not a 4 5 twitchy athlete, so there is that. He also probably ain't out here jumping 40 inches on a vertical. All right, this is not one of those, but the arm, tight ball, never wobbles. I like the deep ball, super uh, high arc on it. I want that ball coming down. Uh, that's the Dylan Raiola uh, evaluation. So hold that one in your head. Keep a picture of it. Now, Puglisi. Puglisi was a immediately walked in the room, dude. Dude, like every college coach that talked to him was like, damn, grown-ass man. 
grown man, like handles his business. Not to say that the other guy didn't, this guy does. All right, not for the flash. Doesn't care about interviews all that much. Not that the other guy, is, but this is how this is going to happen the rest of their career. So separate the two evaluations. All right, but this guy, all about his business, all about his football. All right, stayed up at Avon, or uh, started his career at a small school in Mass. Ended up at Avon Old Farms to find out what college football was like, and that's exactly what he got. All right, he got a boarding school type education where we go to workouts in the morning, we go to class, all right, we go back to uh, practice, we go back to meetings, we take care of our body, we go to sleep, we wake up tomorrow, we do the shit all over again. All right, that's what this dude's been doing for the last three years. So that's what this guy's about. On top of that, you talking about life. It's the opposite of Rayola. Rayola is arrivable. Rayola is catchable. Rayola is uh, beautiful. It's a, it's, a, it's a really tight ball. It looks awesome. But at least you take your goddamn head off, all right? That ball zips. That ball is heavy. That ball arrives violently. And you know what that does? That, that makes a lot more tight window throws on the next level than the other guy. But the other guy layers the football a little bit better, all right, at this level of his uh, career. Now, the other thing about Puglisi, he, he is 6'4". He is he is 225 pounds. He, he is an athlete, okay? He, he's he's going to be everything that you need him to be from a physical standpoint at some point in his football career. I can guarantee that. Now, whether or not he he's able to, like, fully make every throw, he's capable of doing so. Um, this is one of the few, and he got it early on when he started going around to camps. But the Puglisi comp was, like, everybody trying to do the Josh Allen thing. And I'm so scared of the Josh Allen thing because how many goddamn Josh Allens we see walk around this planet? There ain't many of them. All right, so I, I'm very, very cautious of that. But if they're going to do the Pat Mahomes thing to the one guy, we can do the, the, the Josh Allen thing to the other guy because that's what this arm talent, arm strength, uh, you know, absolute horsepower looks like. So basically, Great from, question, by the way. From what I gather between the two is, Dylan's kind of like what you typically look for a Georgia quarterback, kind of what we've seen Georgia go after in regards to that position of processor, got a good head above his shoulders, can layer the football really well, all that good stuff, and tangible's great. Whereas Puglisi's like, this dude's ceiling is immensely high, extremely talented, but maybe like very different, not very different, but like different styles of play, essentially. For sure. For sure. I mean, like you watch Dylan play, and the creation is to get the ball down the field. Right. It's to make uh, make sure we're keeping our eyes up. We're doing all that good stuff. Whereas, like, if you told me going into a football game, hey, state titles on the line, we're going to need you to, to like actually have designed quarterback runs today for eight, nine, 12 you know, times. Puglisi can do that. I wouldn't do that with the other kid. Um, so I don't know. The, the, the evaluation for me is is very, very tough. I, I don't I don't want to do the better than worse than thing. Um but I, I do think it would be irresponsible, okay, to, to have this segment today and not talk about this right here. And I hate doing this, but these are the facts. Four high schools, if this happens, it'll be three commitments for Dylan Riola. I'm just going – I'm right there. So – 